Hey everyone and welcome back to Roadside Coder and in today's video we are going to build a shopping cart app which will help us to understand the complex state management in React apps. We will use context API with use reducer hook for managing our state. Both of these when used together form an entity as powerful as Redux. So let's check out the app and see what are we going to build. So here's our shopping cart app and as you can see all of the products are rendered over here. So let's go on and add a product to the cart. And you can see immediately the number went up. Let me add another product. And you can see the two products has been added to the cart. And you can click on this and you're gonna have a beautiful drop down which displays the summary of all the products that are currently in the cart. Now, if you wanna go and have a look at these products in depth, you can click on go to cart. Now from this drop down as well, you can delete the products. You can see it's updating in real time. So let me just go on and add a few products. And let's go to the card screen and over here you can see the detail of the products that are currently in the card and you can see the total price that user has to pay. Now let's go on and change the quantity of our card. Let me put this three quantity and you can see the total instantly went up and we, I can delete this as well. And you can see the cart is updating in real time. Now this is just the one feature. What I like most about this app is this filter product section. If we click on this ascending, you can see the products are now sorted in ascending order. And if I go on and click on descending, they are sorted in the descending order from high to low price. And if I click on include out of stock, it's going to include all of the products that are currently out of stock. So such as these. Also, if I just want the products which are containing fast delivery, for example, you can see this product, this product has fast delivery, this has four days delivery, but I only want the fast delivery products. So I can click on over here and it's only going to display the products which have fast delivery. Also, this is an interesting part. We are going to build this rating component as well. So if I go on and let's say five stars, so it's only going to display the five star products. You can see all of the five star rated products. If I go on say four stars, then it's going to display four stars and above. Also, we have a clear filter button after pressing which all of the filters will no longer exist. Also, we have this search bar above from where we can filter products even further by searching them. So let's go on and type, let's say handmade. Okay, there we go. You can see the products are filtering in real time. So this is a really good app if you want to become really good in state management in React. Also, you can use this shopping cart and create a full blown e-commerce site and put it on your resume and recruiters are gonna love it. So without any further ado, let's get started. So I've opened VS code here and let's quickly go to the terminal and initialize our new react app. So I'm going to type npx create react app and then the name of our app, which I'm going to give shopping cart and press enter. Now what it's going to do, it's going to go to NPM's repository and it's going to take all of the things that are needed or are necessary to create a new react app. And it's going to create a boilerplate inside of this shopping cart folder. Now, meanwhile, this is initializing. I'm going to go to my browser and I'm going to quickly go and search react bootstrap. So what is react bootstrap? React Bootstrap is a component library that helps us develop our React apps faster. So we are going to use React Bootstrap and let's click on get started. And here you can see it has given us the installation part. So it's giving us installation for React Bootstrap version 5, but version 5 is pretty new and it has a few bugs. So we're going to go and install the version 4. So just click on over here. As you can see, this is in the beta version. So I'm going to go and click on Bootstrap 4. Now click on get started and here we go. You need to run this command to install bootstrap in your react app. So our react app has finished installing. Let's switch to that folder. We can either type CD and the name of the folder, or we can go to file open folder and select that particular folder. Now let's go to terminal and paste the installation line that we had copied npm install react bootstrap and the bootstrap. Here we go. React bootstrap has finished installing. And to set it up, we have to do one final thing and that is add this line to our index.js. So what we are doing over here basically is we are importing all of the styles from bootstrap. So let's go to index.js and add it over here. And now, now quickly run our app to see if everything is working fine or not. So I'm going to go to the terminal and type npm start. Here we go. Our react app has started. Let me dock it to the side. 
And now I'm going to remove a few of the files that we don't need, such as app.test, logo.svg, setup tests, report web vitals, and delete. And you can see it complaining because it was using those files somewhere. So let me remove those from the files. And okay, logo SVG. So I'm going to remove it from here and everything inside of this. And I'm going to just type hello. Here we go. Also, let me remove all of the default styles from the app.css folder. I mean file. So let's start by creating this header component first for our shopping cart app. So I'm going to go to my folder and remove this hello world and I'm going to write header over here. So now this component doesn't exist yet. So we're going to go ahead and create it. So I'm going to create a components folder and inside of it, I'm going to create a new file header.js. R A F C E. Let's get some boilerplate code. If you don't know how I did this, I'm using an extension called React Redux Snippets, something like that. Yeah, this one. ES7 React Redux GraphQL Snippets. All right, cool. So let's type header inside of this and it should have exported. Let's import it. Yep, just like that. It has imported and you can see header has been printed over here. Now we have to create a navbar. So we're going to use a component from React Bootstrap called navbar. Let's go to React Bootstrap and search nav bar. Just like this, we can have a light mode or we can have a dark mode. So we need to uh, wrap everything with this nav bar tag and then we, we are supposed to write everything inside of it. So let me just show you real quick. So instead of this header, I'm going to type over here nav bar and it's going to import it from React Bootstrap. Now inside of this nav bar, I'm going to create a container. So what container does is it keeps everything aligned to the center or I mean, it creates the spacing inside of it at both the sides according to the settings that we provide in this. You're going to understand as we go on and build it. Now we're going to add a tag for navbar brand. So navbar brand is this one. Then, uh, you know, the brand logo of our app. So navbar dot brand. If you go on and check out the documentation for React Bootstrap, you're going to understand what all of these tag means. Uh, we need to add a link inside of it because we want whenever we click on this logo to go back to our home page but we haven't installed react router dom yet so let's just keep uh, a tag for now and there you see our navbar is over here but i want it to be in the dark mode so i'm going to go to my navbar tag and give it a prop of bg equals dark and the variant is going to be dark as well so that every text inside of it turns into white and the style is going to be height i'm going to give it a height of 80. give this href so that it doesn't complains okay it has turned blue so let me fix this real quick we're going to go to our app.css and we are going to add some styles for our link tag that is decoration none and why are we adding important so that it overlaps the styles of react bootstrap and color is going to be inherit. All right. So below this, I'm going to create a search component. So navbar dot text, and I'm going to give it a class name of search. And inside of it, I'm going to have a form form control. If you go on into react bootstraps documentation and search form control, you're going to know exactly what it does. It's basically an input tag, just like in HTML, we have an input tag. So in react bootstrap, we have a form control tag. It's a self closing tag and it's going to have style of with 500 placeholder search a product. Oops. I forgot a bracket over here. Yep. It looks pretty good now. And we're going to have a class name of m auto that is margin auto so these are bootstrap styles so that it creates a equal spacing on both the sides currently you can't see it because i haven't added anything inside of over here we're gonna add a cart icon over there just like that and below this we're gonna add the cart icon the drop down that is this one this thing so i'm gonna import the code for drop down over here uh, you can go to react bootstraps documentation and learn more about it. So let me just import all of these things real quick. And also this thing, this is the icon that we are going to use. Currently I'm going to make it commented out. Also, let me import this badge component. I'm going to explain everything instead of this. Let's write some random number. Let's say 10 and let's check it out. 
okay so there's some issue over here let me test let me check what is going on over here okay so i've figured out what the problem is actually i uh, by mistake i imported it from bootstrap and i'm supposed to import it from react bootstrap so make sure you import everything from react bootstrap because sometimes auto import just makes these mistakes so now if we go on and refresh the page you can see it's working fine and there we go we have our drop down and this is the random number just to show how many items are in the cart let's just add the icon for the cart so what are we going to use for adding the icons we are going to use a library called react icons google search react icons and you're going to land on this website and just type npm install react icons so let's open another terminal and type npm install react icons and what icon we are going to use for our cart let's go over here and search the icon i'm going to search cart so there we go we have a ton of cart icons and we are going to use this fa shopping cart now i'm going to tell you how you're going to use this in your project let's close this terminal up and you can see i've written this just like this fa shopping cart color white and font si font size is going to be 25 pixels now to import it just go over here and ctrl space okay it's not auto importing so let me import it manually import from react icons now you have to see from which uh, folder it's getting imported. So this is FA shopping cart, right? So we need to put FAs in front of it. So just like that. Let's check it out. Yep, there you go. We have a beautiful cart icon over here. Uh, now let's understand this code. So what's going on over here is we are importing a dropdown, which is going to be aligned to the right side. You can see it's aligned to the right side and we are adding a dropdown toggle. So this the toggle means the button which we are adding. So this is the button. So we, this is the toggle and the drop down menu that is going to be the actual space where everything will be rendered. So the drop down menu with this style of max with 370 pixels and it's going to have this message cart is empty. For now, we're just putting cart is empty. Later, we're going to put uh, the cart items inside of it. So this was our header. Now let's quickly go on and create both of our pages for our home page and our cart page. So I'm going to go to the terminal and install react router dom so react router dom helps us to create different pages in react js for different different routes also we have to fix this up so let me just fix this so that i don't forget it forget to fix this later once this gets installed i'm gonna import it yep there we go let's import it yeah just like that import link from react router dom save this and i'm gonna restart my app so that it doesn't complain and we already have an error you should not use link outside a router so we're going to wrap everything in this router so let me remove this dev element and i'm going to import browser router from react router dom and we are going to wrap whole of our app inside of it so just like this and you're gonna see it's going to be working fine now yep there we go now let's create both of our routes so below header i'm going to put a dev and inside of it i'm going to create different routes so first route the add this route tag it's going to have a path prop and it's it will be slash since we are the we are on the home page and we're going to add exact prop so that it doesn't overlaps with other route so for example if we are in this route and we are also creating the slash cart route so slash will overlap with the cart route because it also has the slash in it so that's why we are adding the exact and inside of it, we are adding the home component. So this home component is obviously not created yet. So now I'm going to create a cart route and inside of it, a cart component. So let's create both of these pages. So inside of the component folder, I'm going to add a home.js file, R-A-F-C-E, just like that. And let's name it home. And another file for cart.js. R A F C E and just like that. Okay. There we go. Let's import both of these. Oh, it's not auto importing. Let me import it manually. Home. And just like this cart. There we go. Let's check it out. So we are currently on home in the slash route. And if we go slash cart, we are in the cart page. Great. Now let's create our context for the application, which will manage the whole state of our application. So if you don't know what context is or what context API is, 
you can go and watch my previous video i have explained context api in depth in that video but if you don't want to watch it obviously you can continue with this video i'm going to explain everything in this video as well but in that video i have explained it much much in in depth and how the state management in react works here's a small clip from that video so now what we have done is we have created this context over here and we are going to create our state inside of this context now what's going to happen is this state is accessible in whole of our application so let's say if we want the cart inside of our single products.js it can directly take it and call it inside of this component now we don't need to drill down the props from app.js to product.js and then to single product.js and similarly if our cart page only want this cart variable and not the set cart variable so it can directly take that from our context all right so inside of the src folder i'm going to create a new folder called context and inside of the context i'm going to create two files one for context.js and other file will be for our reducers.js all right so let's create our contexts so context is just like a normal component in react so i'm going to create a functional component over here with the name of context and now we are going to use a function called create context from react which will help us create our context and we're going to name it const cart so cart will be the name of our context or our state now instead of these devs i'm going to write something called cart dot provider or closing tag as well and inside of it what this cart provider will do is it's going to wrap whole of our react app so i'm going to add the children over here and put this children inside of this tag now where will this children come from it's going to come from our index.js because this is the point where our app starts right side of it i'm going to add the context tag and put our app component inside of it let me import it as well yep just like that there we go our app should be working fine now yep no errors all right now what i need to do is as you can see in our react shopping cart app we have all of these products over here so how do we generate the data for these products so we're going to use something called a faker so what is faker so faker helps us generate massive amount of fake data in the browser and node js it helps us generate the data in form of json so as you can see over here we have address data a lot of address data animal data what we are concerned with is this commerce data it's going to give us product name a random price and uh there is something called random as well yep right over here this will help us generate these random images that we are using over there and the uuid so let's go on and install faker so let's copy this up npm i faker and i'm going to open another terminal and paste it now meanwhile this is getting installed let me explain how i'm going to create this fake data so we let's say we want 20 products of fake let fake data right so we're going to type const products i'm going to keep everything inside of this products and we want 20 products right so we're going to create an array now if we are defining an array like this what this does is it creates an array with 20 undefined elements so we're going to map on this array dot map and inside of it we're going to have different different fields so let me just add it real quick yep there we go let me import the faker import faker from faker yeah just like that so first a uh, first field will be for the uuid so it will come from the database second will be from the name it's going to come from the commerce so which i already showed you price also going to come from commerce and image is going to be come from random it's going to be randomly generated and in stock we're going to have a in stock property which will tell if the product is in in stock or not it's going to have the value of that product how much is it in stock so i'm going to add faker dot random so out of these five values it's going to assign any one value to this particular field so just like that fast delivery so it's going to be a boolean field so either is going to be true or false so all of this data is going to be randomly generated also ratings as well because we are going to use the ratings as i already showed you in the demo right over here so there you have it this is what faker is if we have generated our fake data so let's go on and log it and let's check out the browser there you go you can see 
we have generated all of this fake data. You can see fast delivery is false. We have the ID, image, in stock seven, name, price, rating. So this is a really awesome library. I like this a lot. It helps save me a lot of time instead of creating a JSON data by myself. Now in normal context API, what we will do is we're gonna just go over here and type value and we're gonna just import it by typing products over here and it's going to be accessible in whole of our app but we're not going to do that over here we're going to use a hook called use reducer now what is use reducer let's go on and check in the docs so i'm going to type it over here and there we go let's go to the use reducer docs and there we go so it's an alternative to the use state accepts a reducer of time so basically it helps us manage more complex states which use state is unable to handle or will get complex when we are going to handle it with the help of use state so it provides us with this state variable which has the whole state of our app and this dispatch variable which will help us manipulate the state by something like this so you can see over here we have created a reducer over here with the initial state which has the count of zero now if you want to if we want the count to go up what we want to do is we're gonna create a reducer something like this so reducer just like we use in javascript this is just like that reducer only it takes a bunch of data and returns it into a single value or in a single state now you can see when the button is clicked it's going to call the dispatch function with the type of decrement so when the decrement is called the count state is going to go minus one and when the increment is called it's going to go plus one if you're having problem understanding this don't worry as we go on and build our app you're going to understand everything we're going to build multiple reducer in this app so just like the example what we are going to do we're going to have a reducer and an initial state so inside of our initial state what we are going to have we're going to have products which will be these products. Also, we're going to have the cart state, which will be empty initially. Obviously, it's going to be empty because you can see our cart is empty over here. When, we're go when we're going to add any products, then it's going to be added to the cart. So that's why it's empty. And we have our state and dispatch. Now we're, we're supposed to create a reducer. So let me name this reducer cart reducer and we haven't yet created it. So let's just go on and create it real quick. So for now, I'm just gonna add export const cart reducer and it's going to take state and action and inside of it, it's going to have just a normal switch case. So action dot type. So let me explain what this action is all about. Let me remove this for now. And by default, it's going to return our state. Okay, so what is this action? So this action is the same thing that we saw in the documentation, the increment action or the decrement action. So this is what it is. When the increment action is going to be fired off, it's going to check the switch case, just like switch case works. It's going to check the increment. So it's going to go to the case of increment or whatever the action is, and it's going to call it. So I think I'm missing a brace over here. Yep. Right, let's import this cart reducer over here real quick just like this and save it now what we need to do is we need to send both of this state and dispatch through our context so value and add it okay so we have successfully created our context with reducer now what we need to do is we need to export this context so we're going to create a function over here export const cart state so if you've watched my previous video in the context API, so I've told how we can ac access this context. We can access this by using something called use context. So we're gonna, just gonna return use context. And what use context takes is, it takes the context, which is this one, the cart context. So we're gonna just add cart context inside of it. There we go. Now what we need to do is, we just need to go to our home page. Let's go to our home page and import all of our products from the context. So cart state that we had created just now. Let's import that. Okay, let's manually import it from context and context. Let's see. Yep, there we go. And so const, we're going to destructure everything that is inside of it. So what do we want? We want the state. 
So let's take the state and let's console log it to see what is what do we get inside of it. Go to console, refresh the page. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, this is our state. We sent the products from over there and we sent the cart variable, which is empty, obviously. So if you want to access the products, we can either type state dot products or what we can do is we can destructure it one level further. So colon and destructure and type products. So we have took out the products from inside of our state and let's print it and see. Yeah, there we go. We have all of the products. Great. Now inside of this dev, I give the class name of home. And inside of that, we are going to have a component called filters, which is this sidebar component for filter products. So we're just going to have, so we're going to have that and we're going to have this part, which is going to be inside of a dev called product container. And we're going to map through all of our products. So inside of this products dot map prod. So for now, let me just print something like span and inside of it, let me just print prod dot name. So to check if everything is working fine or not. Okay. We forgot to return return. Yep. There we go. We have the name of all of our products and it can, it's saying that it needs a key. So we're going to add that key later once we have created our single product component. So instead of this thing, we're going to create a component called single product. So let's go to components and create a new file, single products product dot js. -E. And just like that. And what this single product component is going to take, it's going to have a detail of a single product. So instead of this, I'm going to now write single product and I'm going to send this prod to it. So prod contains a single product and let's keep the key over here. Key will go in, will be having prod dot ID just like that. Let me get the prod over here that we sent from over there and we're going to print prod dot name just like we did earlier. There we go. It's printed right over here. Now let me just add a few styles to our home.js. So I'm going to create a new file for styles.css and inside of it, I'm going to add a few styles for our home page that are these. So it's going to be uh, inside of the container with the display of flex and the product container, which is this container. It's going to have a display of flex and the width of 78%. So, so that it takes only this much of space and it's going to have the padding of 20 pixels around it and the flex of wrap so that all of these products don't get rendered in a single line. They're going to come to different, different lines and justify content space around to create a little bit of space between them. So let me import these styles import. just like that. Let's check it out. Doesn't look much pretty right now, but it's going to let's take care of this filters component first. So create a new component. Filters. Yes. Now inside of this, we are just going to create uh, these things, all of these radio buttons and the checkbox and this rating component. So let me create this real quick, all of this stuff. And I'm going to explain how rating component is because this is just a generic code. So there we go. Now let me explain what's going on over here. So we're having a dev with the class name of filters with the title of filter products. And we've created multiple spans inside of it. We are going to have a single form. So this is going to be form dot check for radio button and it's going to be of type radio. So again, you can just read more about if about these, if you go to react bootstrap documentation, just search for the form. So inside of the form dot check, we're going to have label of ascending and it's going to be a part of the group called group one. So inside of the group one, we are going to have this as well. So that at one time, either ascending gets selected or descending gets selected. So this is for the radio button and others are for the checkbox. So checkbox first will be the include out of stock. So if the product is out of stock, it's going to be checked and then the fast delivery only checkbox and then this rating tag. So let me explain this later for now. I'm going to comment it out and also let me just import all of these form. So we do that. So from bootstrap also this button. So make sure you are importing it from react bootstrap and not from bootstrap. Otherwise you're going to run into problems. So where is it? Okay. We haven't imported it yet. 
So let's import that real quick, just like this. And you can see all of the, these are appearing over here. So let me give these a few styles. So inside of styles.css, I'm going to add a few styles. So what's going on over here? The parent div, the filters class name, it's going to have the background color of blackish color and the text color will be white. And they're gonna have the padding inside of 20 pixels and display flex and flex direction will be column. So they are assigned from top to bottom. And width is going to be 20% as we give the 78% to the other products section. Margin 10 pixels and height of 86 viewport height. And we are targeting every single span component that is this every single component is in span tag. So it's going to have a padding bottom so that it creates a little bit spacing between each, each other. And the title is going to have font size of 30. Let's check it out. There we go. You can see it looks much, much prettier. And you can see our radio button is working. Our checkboxes are also working. And we're going to have a button for clearing our filters, this button. So let's talk about rating component. Rating is nothing fancy. We're just adding a label for rating just like we do and we are creating another component for rating. So let's create this component real quick and then I'll explain what's going on over here. So new folder, sorry, new file rating. Oh yes. So this rating is going to take a state from the parent component. First will be rating and an on click function and the style if any. So let me explain. So for now for explaining, let me just create a random state inside of this component use state later we're going to have our dynamic state let me just give this rate and default value will be five let's say or let's say three and let me import use state let me import rating yep it's imported and for the rating we're going to send this rate and style will be this okay great now let's start creating this rating component What's going to happen inside of it? So let me just show you. So in our app, we have these five stars, right? So all of these five stars are the five icons. So whenever the rating value is two, so what we want is only two of the stars will be this fill icons and the other will be empty icons. If the its value is four, then it's going to be four filled icons and the one will be empty icon. So let me show you how we're going to implement that. So we're going to have an empty array of five values. And we're going to map it. Now, we're not going to take anything from the map. So let's keep underscore over here, but we do want the index. So we're going to take the index. Now inside of it, I'm going to have a span tag. And inside of the span tag, we're going to check the rating for every iteration. So if the rating is more than I, that is the current index. If it's more than the current index, it's going to render the filled icon. Okay. Otherwise it's going to render the empty icon. So let me render the filled icon first, which is going to be AI fill star font size of 15 pixels. Otherwise it's going to be rendering the outline icon, which is going to be this one. So let me import both of these from react icons slash so what is this ai so ai yep just like that let's import both of these yeah there we go and for our span tag since we are mapping so we need a key so key will be let's say index and we're gonna have an on click function which will be coming from the parent component so for now i'm just gonna add on click on click and it's going to I'm going to send it. I I'm going to tell you why I'm sending I to it in just a second. And if there's any style being sent by the parent, I'm going to assign the style to it. Oops. I forgot this tag. Yep. There we go. Now let's go to our parent component and let's first check it out. What, how does it look? Okay. It looks good. So as you can see, we had rendered three over here. Okay. On click is not working. My bad. Yeah. So we have rendered three. So it's uh, displaying three. So let me change it. If I type two over here, you're going to see it has turned into two. Now what we want it want is let's say if I clicked on this particular rating star. So what it should do, it's, it's one, two, three, four. So it's fourth, right? So it's going to set the state to the fourth star. So it should change this to the fourth. So I'm going to take this set rate and I'm going to add on click on click. What it should do should set the rating to 
that particular thing that we, which was being sent to us. So it was being sent, the I was being sent from the rating component as you can see on click. So on click will be receiving this I component and so we are receiving this I over here. Just like that. Let's check it out. Yep, there we go. It's working fine. Okay, it's having some problem when I'm clicking the last star. It's only rendering till four stars. So I think we're gonna have to do this since it starts from the zero. So we're gonna have to do I plus one. Let's check it out. Yep. Yeah, it's working absolutely fine. Great. We have successfully created our filter section. Now let's move forward and create this single product component, which we had left earlier. So we're going to make it just like this. Okay. So single product dot JS inside of this, I'm going to remove this up and this div will have class name of products. And inside of this div, we're going to create a card component, which will come from react bootstrap. Again, you can just go to react bootstraps documentation, and I would highly recommend you to go and read about this component inside of this, I'm going to have card dot IMG component, which will help us display the image. So it's going to be a self closing tag. So let me remove this one. Yeah, just like this, the variant, it's going to be top SRC will be prod dot IMG. So from the prod, it's going to take the IMG field and also we need to add the alt tag prod dot name for the alt tag. Okay, there we go. We can see the images are being rendered, but for some reason they are not. Also, one more thing I forgot to do is so all of these data that is coming from the faker, it's going to be changing every single time that we call these products. So what we should do is we should make them a static data. I mean, it should render only one type of data. So I'm going to add faker dot seed over here. So seed, what it does is it only renders one type of data. It's not going to change every time, every time the data is called. I think it's image. I M A G E. If I'm not wrong. Yep. It's image. That's why it was not getting rendered. Let's check it out. Okay. You can see the pics are huge right now. So we have to style them as well. Now inside of it, I'm going to have card dot body. So cards body compo uh, content will go inside of this. So here we go. We are having card dot body inside inside of the card dot body. We're having card dot title, which is the name of the product. And so the card dot subtitles we're going to have if it's the fast delivery or four days delivery. So we're checking it over here. Also, the price is being rendered. Let me just show you first, then I'll explain this. So rating is not defined. Okay, let me first import the rating component. Now let me show you. Yeah, you can see over here. So the title is fantastic wooden chicken in the second uh, line, we're going to have the pricing. So card dot subtitle and the pricing and all of this stuff will come inside of the card dot subtitles. And then we are checking if the product is fast delivery product. So if the if it's the fast delivery, then it's going to render the fast delivery. Otherwise, it's going to render the four days delivery just like that. Now what we need to do, we're going to add our add to cart button and remove to cart button. So currently let's add both of these buttons at once. Then later we're going to add a checking to see if it's in the cart, then we're going to only render it in that case button and import from react bootstrap. It's going to be the variant of danger. So danger means red variant, which is for remove from cart and we, okay. Has it not imported? Yeah. Now it's important and we're going to have another button, which is going to be variant. Which is not going to be any variant. So it's going to be by default blue. So add to cart. Let's save this and check it out. Yeah, there we go. Remove to cart and add to cart. Now also we have to check if this product is in our, uh, is in the stock or not. So button, it's going to have a disabled property and it's going to check if prod dot in stock. So we had an in stock property over here. You can see which was a Boolean. Oh, sorry. It was not Boolean. So it was having all of these array elements. So if it's zero, then it's going, it's going to be disabled. Otherwise it's going to be enabled. And inside of over here, what I'm going to add is I'm going to check if the product is in stock or not. If it's in the stock, then it's going to display add to cart. Otherwise it's going to display out of stock and the button will be disabled. So let's check it out. Okay. This is in the stock in the stock. Yep. There we go out of stock and the button is disabled. 
also you can see our rating component is also over here since we are sending this okay great now let's style these these are huge right now let me just give them a few width and margin styles real quick so let's go to styles.css and i'm gonna give them some width of 30 percent and margin of 10 pixels and there you go looks much much beautiful now let's start creating our reducer and the functionality for our app the add to cart and remove to cart functionality so let's go to our reducers.js real quick and i'm going to create my first case will be add to cart so what is add to cart gonna do so it's going to return all of our state which was already there and apart from that what it's going to do it's going to manipulate our cart state so let me tell you about this action variable real quick so th this action variable takes two things one it's going to take the type that is add to cart and the other thing it's going to take it's payload so payload contains the data that we want to put in the state and manipulate the state so we're going to type cart it's going to send up some payload and i'm, I'm going to show you how we're going to use that so whatever that's already inside of the state we're, gonna, we're just going to let it be over there so state dot cart we're, we're destructuring the everything that is inside of the state already and what we need to do we need to add what we are sending from our app to it so action dot payload we're going to send the payload and it's going to be having the quantity of one so qty to be one oh i need to add the destructuring over here as well so that all of these properties gets destructure inside of this array otherwise if if we were not adding the quantity then we could have directly written it just like that all right great now second what we need to add is remove from cart so let me duplicate it and add remove from cart and let me remove this up and instead of this what we are going to write inside of the cart we are going to filter it so whatever the product that which is being sent from over there we are going to filter it up so state dot cart dot filter take the c variable and c dot id it's going to check it's going to compare with every single element inside of the cart id is not equal to action dot payload dot id if it's not equal then it's not going to return it and then it's going to be removed from our cart all right so here is the functionality for adding and removing the product from the cart so let's go to single product dot js real quick and import our state over here so cart state just like this and we're going to take out a few things from this state so first thing that we need is state obviously and inside of the state what do we have we have the cart variable inside of it so we're going to access the cart variable and the dispatch obviously to manipulate our state you're going to know how i'm going to use this now to conditionally render it over here uh, that is these uh, add to cart and remove from cart button what we are going to do we're going to check it over here so from our cart state that we have imported we're going to check cart dot sum so what sum does is sum helps us check if that particular thing exists inside of the array or not so what is the current product this prod so and what are what are the things inside of the cart i'm going to check p so p dot id if it's equal to prod dot id that means if this product if it's inside of the cart then we are only supposed to render remove from cart and not the add to cart so question mark if this is the case then we're gonna print remove from cart otherwise add to cart so let's add remove from cart first so i'm gonna take this and put it over here and for the other one i'm going to take this and put inside of over there just like that now these buttons are not going to work obviously for now and it's going to just display this it's just going to display add to cart because these are not working and they won't be added to cart right now so let's just add the uh, on click function over here so first of all for adding to the cart so on click on click what it's going to do it's going to fire off a function called dispatch and as i mentioned before dispatch takes two things first thing will be type so what type will this be add to cart first the type is done then second payload payload will be simply prod the product that is currently being rendered and simply we're going to do it for this as well 
or remove to cart which is going to write remove from cart let's check it out and there you go it's working absolutely fine awesome let's inspect it inside of the console let me print our cart real quick cart let's add to cart and you can see the item has been added to the cart if i click on add to cart again it has added to the cart and don't worry these are all getting rendered so many times it's because the products are getting rendered so many times that's why it's not going to cause any performance issues now what's the next step is let's just whenever we click on add to cart it should go inside of this header right over here so let's go on to header and configure this setting real quick inside of the header dot js let's take our cart state so cart state inside of the cart state we are going to take out the cart and inside of the state we are going to take out our cart state now first of all let me just uh, re replace this thing with our cart dot length so it's going to check how many elements are there inside of our cart so you can see it's the number is changing add, as we are adding see three if i remove two yeah now we need to render all of this stuff inside of our cart now so inside of over here we are going to check if cart dot length is more than zero then it's going to render something otherwise what it's going to render it's going to render cart is empty so let's get that out of the way real quick and inside this place we're gonna render something else now inside of this fragments we're gonna write our code so we're gonna map the cart full cart the everything that is inside of our cart so cart dot map prod and let me write this real quick first and then i'm going to explain what i did so i've written this code so let me do this yeah so i've written a span tag with the class name of cart item and the key since we are doing a map over here inside of this we are going to have an image with the class name of cart image and source will be prod dot image and all tag will be prod dot name and then we're going to have a div let me just comment this out first so that you can understand easily yeah so let me just show you what's going on now if i do just like this okay it's huge because it's not styled yet so we're rendering the image and the name of whatever that's inside of the cards if i remove it so you're gonna see there's only one element right now only one product inside of it and it's rendering the price as well so let's go to it's just a simple code it's nothing fancy going on over here so product dot price so why have i written this like this i forgot to explain this earlier so product dot price if i don't write it like this what it's going to how it's going to render it is you can see 23.00 so we don't want this 00, 0 so we are splitting it from the dot and we are taking the first element so that it's only appears like this there we go and now we are adding this ai fill delete icon from react icons so that it looks like this we are going to add this delete icon so let's import this delete icon real quick okay there we go it has auto imported yeah it has auto imported and we're going to take the dispatch as well so what dispatch will help us do it's going to help us remove it from the cart so when we press this particular icon ai fill delete it's going to call the dispatch with the action of remove from cart and it's going to product uh, and supply the product so let's check it out yeah there we go if i press this yeah the cart is empty let's add more products if i press this only one product remains yeah so it's working absolutely fine let's go on and style this real quick inside of our styles.css i'm gonna add a few styles let me explain these so display is going to be flex so that all of them are in the single line and justify content is going to be space between so that they maintain a bit of space in between them just like this you can see images and this delete icon align items is going to be in the center and a few margin and margin bottom cart item image so i'm giving a few border radius to the image and some width and height and object fit cover to the image so that it appears a bit small just like this so let's go to our app yeah it looks good and the other thing is cart item details that is this div we want this to be from top to bottom so we're going to add display flex and flex direction to be column 
some padding and flex one so that it takes the full width of the component. It pushes this and this to both of the sides, just like that. Now we're also going to have a button over here, which will say go to the cards page so that we, if we can also go to the slash cards page. Remember that we created at the start of the tutorial. So you know what, let me just create that button as well over here. So it's going to take us to the card play page slash card page and import the button from React Bootstrap and it's going to have the width of 95% and some margin around it. So let's see. Yeah, it looks good. So it's taking us to the slash card page, which is empty for now. So yeah, let's just start building the slash card page. Go to card.js and let me close other files, which we don't need. Yeah, card.js. Inside of it, we are going to render all of our card, right? So we're going to need the state. So card state. From context, yeah, there we go. We're gonna take out the cart from our state and we're going to need dispatch, just like this. Now inside of this, this dev will have a class name, the home class name, on the because we're just gonna have the dimensions of this page is going to be the similar. So we're just going to reuse those styles that we had made earlier also. Inside of this dev, we're going to render all of the products. So if you notice, this page, this card page is also having the similar dimensions as the home page. So it's just the products is on the right side and this is on the left side. And for this one, we're just having the products on the left side and the subtotal is on the right side. So we're just going to do that. So for this dev as well, I'm going to have a class name of product container which we have already created. Now inside of this, we are going to have something called a list group. So list group also comes from React Bootstrap. So let me search list group, oops, list groups, yeah. So list groups enables us to, you know, uh, render a list like this, just like this. So this is what we're going to use to list out our content of the cart. So list group inside this list group we're going to map it map the card so card dot map and inside of this we are going to have the cart item let me just comment it out for now okay it's giving us error so let me just insert this cart items i'm gonna write span with prod dot name Let's see. Yep, we have just one item in the cart. Let's add some other items. Yeah, it's rendering over here. We're gonna style it later. And below this, what we're gonna have, we're going to have this sidebar, this sidebar for total items. So let me create that real quick, div. And for this div as well, we're gonna create the class name that we have already created. Filters for the filter sidebar. And we're going to have another class name summary which will be just increase its width a little bit so it's just going to overlap the width property of filters now it's going to have a class name of title which we have already created this one as well for our filters page and it's going to have subtotal of cart dot length items that is all of the items that are in the cart so let me show you yeah, subtotal three items because three items are there in the cart. Now below this, we're gonna have a total pricing and a button for proceed to checkout, which is obviously where is not going to work because we're just building a shopping cart app to import this button. And above this, we're gonna have a total. So how will we calculate this total? So let me just show this real quick. So we're gonna create a state over here, a local state with the help of use state, and I'm gonna name it total. So to create, uh, calculate the total inside of the use effect, what we are going to do, let me first import use effect. Yeah. So we're going to reduce this cart variable and use the cart dot price and calculate the full price. So let me just show this real quick set total. Inside of the set total, we're going to use cart dot reduce. So reduce takes two, fun two uh, inputs accumulator dot uh, comma current element 
So accumulator will have a default value, which I'm going to give zero. So accumulator plus current product dot price, just like that. Also this current dot price is going to be in a string format. So I'm going to convert it to number. Also this use state will be called every time our cart variable changes. Let's check it out. There we go. Proceed to check out. Let me change this and you can see it's changing in real time. But there's one more factor that we need to consider that it's going to have the quantity. We're going to have the quantity of this product. For example, if this product is in two quantity, then this should be added twice. So remember inside of our reducers, we added this quantity as well. So we can take this quantity. So current dot price multiplied by current dot QTY. Let's see. Uh, obviously, it's not going to do anything because all of the products are having uh, one quantity. So it's not going to work now. But later when we add the feature of increasing the quantity, it's going to work. Let's go to cart. Yeah, let's start tiling a little bit. So first of all, let me just add this summary styles. So dot summary. And it's nothing It's just going to have a width of 30%. And let's start styling this part. So it's going to have a row inside of it. So this is the is going to be a single row. And inside of it, we're going to have a multiple columns. But before that, I need to get, wrap it inside of list since it's inside of this list group. So it has to have a parent component of list group dot item. Let's take all of this stuff inside of it. So column in the medium screens, the column will have the spacing of two. I'm going to explain that. What does that mean? If we go to react bootstrap and type MD, you can see responsive breakpoints. So these are the breakpoints that uh, are going to help us. So which are different, different help uh, breakpoints such as SM, which will be how will it take the space in the smaller screen, MD for medium screen, LG for larger screen. So it is divided into 12 parts. The responsive bootstrap is divided into 12 parts just like this. So we can just assign it in the, the medium screen. It's going to have the two space of the screen. So just like that. So inside of the span, I'm going to have product dot name. So this is going to be the first column. So let me show you. Uh, okay. We don't have any item in the cart. Let's go to the cart. So you can see this is one row and we're having one column inside of it. So we're going to have multiple columns. Another one will be for price and the other one will be for rating. So let me import a rating component and we're sending the rating to it prod dot rating. Okay. It's not importing rating just like that. Let's check it out. Yeah, there we go. It's starting to take shape, but it's a little bit compressed right now. So we're going to take care of that later. Also, I forgot to add the key so that it doesn't give error. So prod dot ID. So below this, we're going to have a form control. So this form control, this drop down menu. So this is how it's going to look. It's going to have a column and inside of it, we're going to have a form control. Let me explain this real quick. So this form control will be a select. It, it's going to be rendering as a select. So it, we're adding a prop called select. So we're rendering this product dot quantity to display like how much quantity we have currently in our cart. Also inside of it, we are rendering an array with the prod dot in stock. So for example, if it's in, if the number of items in the stock are five, so what it's going to do, it's going to map on all of these and it's going to render an option for it. Yeah, you can see over here, we are rendering one, two, three, four, five. Also, I can see that I forgot to add the image over here. So the right above the prod dot name, we're going to add this image and this image tag will come from react bootstrap. It's like this. So another column for prod dot image. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Now it looks much, much better. It's taking full width of the section because we have added the fluid over here and rounded. So that image looks a bit rounded. Now the, the last thing that the last column that we are supposed to add over here is, is to remove from the cart button. So it's just like, uh, like we have added in the header, the delete button, just like this one. So below this column, I'm going to add another column with the button and inside of this button, it's going to have AI fill delete. Let me import it. Yep. And 
you know the drill we're gonna add the remove from cart action inside of it so that we can remove the stuff from the cart so let's check it out if i click on this it gets removed from the cart and this is not going to work right now because we haven't created the change quantity functionality yet so we're just going to create it next so let's create another functionality inside of our reducers so i'm gonna add another case which will be for change cart quantity this will return our state and the changes that you are going to be uh, in the state are going to be in the cart so cart state dot cart dot filter so c dot id if c dot id is equal to action so we're going to send the payload obviously dot payload dot id if it's in the cart it's going to change the quantity. So C dot QTY will be equal to action dot payload dot QTY. So otherwise it's going to have C dot QTY, which is already there. Let's go to car dot JS and inside of over here, we're gonna have an on change. So just like this. So on change of this form control, what it's going to do, it's going to send to the payload, the ID of the current product and the quantity of the current product, which is E dot target dot value, which will be coming from this component. So it's going to send this. And when it goes over here, it's going to check if the ID matches action dot payload dot ID, then the C dot quantity will be action dot payload dot quantity. Otherwise it's going to be the quantity which was already there. So if it matches, then it's going to change the quantity. Great, let's check it out if it works or not. It's gonna change the price over here if it worked. Yep, it's working fine. It's working absolutely fine. If I remove this, yep, it's working fine from over here as well. All right, cool. Now everything is done for our shopping cart part. Now what we're supposed to do is add this filter products logic. If we click on this ascending, then these all should be, you know, sorted from the ascending order and if descending in the descending order include out of stock, then this should be displayed. But currently it's all already being displayed, but we're gonna make it such that it doesn't get displayed if this is not selected and fast delivery only as well. So for this, we are just going to go to our context.js and we are going to create another reducer. Use reducer and it's going to have an initial state of all of those things that are responsible for filtering. So one of these things are by stock variable. If it's by default, it's going to be false. So we're not going to display all of those things that are out of stock by fast delivery. If this one is checked, it's only going to display those products that are fast delivery by rating and by default, it's going to be zero. So it's going to display all of the products that is zero means zero rating and above. If it's five rating, then it's going to display five rating and there's nothing above it. So it's not going to display anything and three above. So just like that, I, you get the idea and for our search as well. So search query, it's going to be by default empty. So this is our reducer. So this state, as you can see, is already been defined. So I'm just going to name this different. So let's say product state and product dispatch yeah also this reducer for i'm going to create a new reducer called product product reducer which is not created yet so let's just go on and create it real quick export const product reducer it's going to take the state and the action as usual and let's import it over here there we go. Let's see if we have any error. I don't think so. Yeah, great. So also we need to send these to our app. It's not going to work right now because we haven't added the functionality, but let's just send them. All right, let's start adding the functionality in our product reducer. So we're just going to manipulate these state, all of these state with the help of this reducer. So I'm going to add a switch case with action dot type, just like we usually do. And we have, we are going to have a few cases. So let me first just return state by default. And the first case, what will the first case be? So it's going to be sort by price, 
return the state and whoops and what else we are going to do in this which is going to add the sort variable to our state so sort will be action dot payload so this is going to be called by this radio button if we press this it's going to set the sort to ascending otherwise it's going to sort it i mean it's going to set it to descending the sort variable now next thing is let me duplicate it filter by stock it's simple what are we going to do we're just going to invert whatever the value of buy stock is so buy stock colon state dot buy stock which is going to invert the value and we're going to have a few more filters so for example filter by delivery rating search so filter by delivery rating search also we have to change these so for delivery it was by fast delivery so we're just gonna import invert it by fast delivery other one was by rating so by rating is going to be different so by rating will be having the rating that's going to be coming from our app so action dot payload so it's going to send the rating by which we need to uh, filter all of these for example one two three four five any rating also similarly for our search query search query it's going to change the search query and it's going to be coming from action.payload also we're going to have one more uh, case over here can you guess for what let me tell you real quick for this one for clear filters we need to clear the filters right so yes clear filters and it's going to return just the default state so let me just copy this initial state real quick and I'm going to paste it right over here. So it's just going to make them false by default. And I guess we are done with it. All right, great. Our functionality is done. Let's just go on and implement it in our app. So let's go to filter.js first. So we have to add a lot of functionality in filter.js. So first let's import all of those stuff, our state. So from our cart state, okay, cart state has been imported. So const, so what we want is we want the, we just, we don't want the normal state, right? J remember we had a state and we have product state. So we want the product state and products dispatch all of both of these things. So we have, Im we are importing these. Uh, let's just try to log it to see what do we have in it. Product state. Yeah. Let's inspect. Yeah, we can see we have all of these stuff that we added to our state. Great. Well, let me remove this from our state. We are going to take few of the things that is all of those state that we defined earlier by stock, by fast delivery, sort and by rating. So let me remove this rating first and we're just going to add by rating to this. By default, it, the rating will be by rating that is zero. So set rate is undefined. Yeah, obviously it's going to be undefined. So let me remove this for now. And for this, I'm just gonna add the way we can change the rating. So how can we change the rating with the help of this filter by rating? So let me add this first. Let me add the rating functionality first. So remember we have imported this product dispatch. So we're gonna use that. So this product dispatch and it's going to have type filter by rating and the payload will be the current index plus one just like we were doing previously for set rate just it's the same thing let's check it out let me log it so that we can check product state is not defined oops yeah obviously it's not defined so let me just print both all of these also let me remove this use state since we are not using it yeah let's check it out let's inspect console yeah false false undefined if we if i just go on and press three yeah you can see the rating is changing all right great let's do this for similarly for ascending descending as well so for ascending what i'm going to do i'm going to send low to high and for descending i'm going to send high to low on change what it's going to do it's going to call product dispatch type will be sort by price and it's going to set our sort variable by low to high this sort variable and if it's true and, and if it's like it's low to high so what it's going to do is going to check it 
so i'm going to add another prop checked so if the sort is low to high we are taking out sort from over here if the sort is low to high then it's going to be true otherwise it's going to be false so similarly that is what we are supposed to do in the descending as well so just like this sort by price if i change this then it's going to be high to low so let's check it out if i go on and press this you can see high to low to high if i press this it's going to be switched to high to low now what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to do this include out of stock product dispatch type filter by stock it's not going to need any payload so we're just going to call type filter by stock and it's going to you know invert the value and also checked is by stock if it's true then it's going to be checked otherwise it's going to be false similarly for fast delivery as well just like this it's the same logic as above so i guess we are done here let's test it out if i click on fast delivery yep it's true include our stock yep that's true if i remove it it's false let's go on and implement on all of these products so that whenever we change any of these these get changed also let me just add this clear filter i forgot to add this one so inside of our button we're just going to add on click which is going to call the clear filter so on click the type will be clear filters and it's going to clear all the filters and by default it's going to be this let's check it out we, sh we should al always confirm it so that we don't have any problem later so okay if i click on clear filter yep it's clearing it has cleared all of the filters you know what let's first add this search query as well and then we're gonna go on and implement it into our products so let's go to our header or js where we have our search so what we will need we're gonna need product dispatch from our card state and inside of our form control we're gonna add on change it's going to call filter by search this one filter by search and it's going to give the search query and search query will be coming from e dot target dot value this one all right let's test this one out as well and then we can do it so if i type anything mm, seems like it's not working oh okay we because because we are not taking that one out from the state so search query and filters we have to take this out just like this yeah there we go the search query is being displayed over here so we don't need this item over here so i'm gonna remove this yeah all right let's go to our home page now now instead of this products i'm going to render a function called transform products over here and i'm going to create that function right above over here so const transform products and since we are taking our product state over here we are going to manipulate this state so let let's just copy this state first into another variable so sorted products variable and i'm gonna assign it to this one now we're gonna check one by one so first of all let me just bring all of those product state so product state inside of the product state we need sort by sort fast delivery and blah 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 all of these states so we're gonna check first if there's something inside of the sort if sort has low to high or high to low then what we're going to do we're going to manipulate this sorted product variable sorted products equals sorted products dot sort we're gonna use this sort function that is embedded inside of the javascript so a comma b you can just google it and learn more about this so, so if the sort is low to high is equal to low to high then the price will be a comma b a a dot price minus b dot price this means it's going to be in the descending order that means it's going to put a before b otherwise it's going to be b dot price minus a dot price just like that then it's going to sort all of these let me test it out if i remove this products and add this transform products over here also we need to uh, return this sorted products in the end so return sorted products let's check it out if i click on ascending yep you can see 66 143 is putting them in ascending order if i click on descending all right great it's working fine let's add for buy stock so buy stock so in buy stock we're gonna check if the buy stock is false then we're gonna filter it 
So what we want is we want only those products to be displayed, which are in, let me just refresh it. So by default, it's going to display all of the products that are out of stock. Let me save this first. Now you're going to see it's going to display only those products that are currently in the state. But as soon as we click on include out of stock, that means it's true. Then it's not going to go through all of these and it's going to display all of the products. But if it's false, then it's going to display all of the products that are currently in the state only. Now, next one is by fast delivery. If the fast delivery is true, then it's going to display all of the products that are only fast delivery. Next for rating. If there's something inside of the rating, we're going to, which is going to go inside of it and sorted products dot filter. And it's going to check the rating value. For example, if three, it's going to display all the products that are rated three and more than three. So this is what's going on over here. And in the last, we're going to have a search query. So if there's something inside of the search query, it's going to filter the products and we're just comparing it with the lowercase. So for example, if our query is, let's say PI, I mean, sorry, it's, it's over here. So product dot if the product dot name in, which is in the lowercase, if it includes this search query, then it's going to display only that, that products, only those products. So let's check it out. I hope this is going to work. Let's refresh it. Ascending, descending, great. Include out of stock. Okay, I guess it's working. Yep, it's including out of stock. If I remove this, it's not including them. If I click on fast delivery only, yep, all of these are fast delivery only. If I go on and make rating five star, okay, there we go, all of the five star products. If four star, okay, I guess none of them are four stars. Three stars, yep, three stars and above, that is five stars also. So this is how it's going to work. If I click on clear filter, it's going to clear all of the filters. All right, the one thing that's left now is to make this app responsive because it looks ugly right now. So I'm going to go to the styles and just bring in all of the media queries and let me explain what they are doing for the filters. I'm making the width 40% and padding 10% and margin five pixels on all of the font size, as you can see, has been reduced to 10 pixels and the title has been reduced to 18 pixels. So that fits in perfectly with the mobile view. For the product containers, I'm going to make with 58%, as you can see, from 78% to 58%, and the padding will be zero. For the search, for the smaller screen, I'm not going to display the search, or you can display the search in the next line. I decided not to display the search, none. And for the products, the width is going to be 100% because I want one product at a time. There we go. Let's check out our cart. Add to cart. Let's go to our cart. Our cart also looks absolutely fine. If I change this quantity, it's working. Great. So congratulations. We have successfully created our shopping cart app. You can use this app to integrate it into your own e-commerce website, a full fledged e-commerce website and make it an awesome project. So thank you all for watching this video. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button below and also subscribe to the channel for more such awesome tutorials. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.